God, I'm Olivia. And together we talk some shit. Um, this is the podcast in Olivia Talk Shit. If you guys are listening to this on a podcast listening platform, heck yeah. But Thank why you don't you much. come on over to YouTube where you can see a filmed version of it with some fun animated stuff. Come on over to where all the cool kids live here on YouTube. <laughs> and just to encourage that, I'm only going to speak in sound language, but e- I'm going to do exactly. it wrong. Yeah. Right, 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 right. right. So it's going to be hard for everyone. Yes. Yeah. And, and the voice you just heard is from uh, the man, the myth, the legend, uh, Dan Povenmire, creator of Phineas and Ferb, uh, w- one of my favorite shows from being a child. Our spectacular guest today. Let's let's do studio a, audience. Studio let's audience, some, some applause. How are you, Dan? I'm doing swell. Oh, I love that. I yeah. love that. That's nice. We, uh, it's funny. We originally met you through TikTok. Yes. Which we love. We yes. love that. Um, but and yeah, I, we've been fans of you forever. Yeah. For, Excellent. Um, since yeah. since you were children, probably. Since we were yeah. children, I remember in high school. Since a I would, past life. Yeah. In high school, yeah. I would wear a T-shirt that had Perry, Perry the, platypus the platypus on it. Yeah. Excellent. And Excellent. my math teacher would call me Perry. Yeah. Because I would wear it so often. That would yeah. that, you know that's a A to B right there. There yeah. you yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> easy, easy, easy stuff. Um. What? How did you? How did you get the idea for Phineas and Ferb? Well, my my uh, writing partner on uh, Rocco's Modern Life, which, which was a show I was writing on at the time, uh, was this guy Swampy Marsh, good friend of mine. We created two shows together since uh, since then, but we had been trying to do something ourselves so that we could continue to write together. Because uh-huh. they just sort of thrown us together on Rocco and we really had a good time writing together. And we're like, hey, let's just create a show and sell it and put it on the air and we'll never have to work apart. And we created this show and we pitched it all over the place. And then during that time, during like, there was like 13 years where we never even worked in the same studio. <laughs> and, and for half of that time, we weren't even in the same country. He was living in England working. Uh, but when I finally got, uh, got a call from Disney saying, hey, we'd like to option Phineas and Ferb, I had to like figure out what time is it in <laughs> England right now and call Swampy and say, hey... I think that we, you know, like like Disney wants to option Phineas and Ferb. If if we get a show out of it, are you going to come back and you know and yeah. move back here and work with me? And he said, "That sound you hear is me packing." And I was <laughs> like, "No, well, not yet. Let's get a you know, let's go I through the pilot that. and all nice. that sort of stuff." But uh, but it was it was just uh, like I was sitting in a in a restaurant. We'd been trying to come up with an idea, and we had a couple little ideas that were, that I think would have been good shows. But none of it really just gelled for, uh, for me. And I was, I was just doodling in a restaurant in South Pasadena. You know, they give you butcher paper instead of a tablecloth yeah, and a little yeah, can yeah, of right. crayons. Yeah, You absolutely. know, and, and I had this purple crayon. And I just drew this triangle-headed kid because I'd never seen a character with a triangle as the shape of their head. Valid. And uh, I was like, I wonder if I could do that. And I put the eyes up there. And then it was like, oh, okay. This is this is something that like appeals to me, and my wife said, "Ooh, who is that?" And I said, uh, "This is Phineas. This is the show I'm going to sell someday." That was my exact verbatim. Wow, words I love that. I love the, stories time. like that. And I took it, I tore it off, and I've got that framed up in my That's house. So funny. And I I tore it off, and I and I took it home, and I drew Ferb and Doofenshmirtz and Perry that night, and I brought it in the next day and said, "Hey." What about these guys? And we just built the whole world around. Uh, that, around that's those amazing. Cool. I like that you had Doofenshmirtz and Perry from the beginning because yeah. they yeah. feel like something that would have happened where you were writing one storyline and then you got off on this little tangent and went, "Whoa, what if that was a whole other part of the show?" Yeah. But I like that it was like in the initial creation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it, it was. It was always part of the idea was because we had both grown up with. Um, Rocky and Bullwinkle, which was sort of an mm-hmm. anthology series where they'd have like five minutes of one story and then five minutes of fractured fairy tales and right, five, right, five right, minutes right, of this. Right, right. And it was like all these different things that you would follow, but they weren't really connected yeah. in one big story. And we felt like, let's try to do a show like that, except have the stories going on in the same universe at the same time and have them connect at the end. That's very oh And God, so yeah. that's sort of how we wrote the show most of the time. It's like, how are these all going to connect that's so mm-hmm. fun at, at the end that's so fun because you have candace the whole time who always sees everything that actually happens and tells her parents and they are just don't believe her at all but it's so fun because the whole the whole story connects with every single character that was in it and then somehow all of them together make whatever was there completely disappear yes. yeah to make Candace <laughs> by the end of the episode crazy. Yeah, yeah absolutely which exactly. is like it's the best the, setup it's the snuffleupagus uh, factor <laughs> you know like when we, we, we were growing up there was this 
character on Sesame Street, the Snuffleupagus, that was like a big woolly mammoth. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, and I Big Bird used to try to get everybody to see it. No matter what he tried to do, the Snuffleupagus would just sort of like, oh, I'm going to leave now. And he would just leave. And, and Big Bird always looked like an idiot to everybody. And, and oh, I just God. remember how much that hooked us into to seeing that. So we were, uh, that was sort of our our impetus for having Candace never really bust them. Yeah, we I love it. That. I love it so much. That's and so then fun. did you always know you were going to play Doofenshmirtz? Well, when I started drawing and writing the first episode, which is the roller coaster episode, uh, it was like 10 o'clock at night. I was on vacation with my wife's family in France. Oh, that's so and, uh, and, uh, and I just had a bunch of storyboard paper that I, did, that I brought with me. And so everybody would go to sleep around 10 and I would just start drawing the show and yeah. writing it as, as I was going. And I got to that first, Doofenshmirtz was like, ah, Perry the Platypus, what an unexpected surprise. And I had this, this voice in my mind, but I couldn't pitch it to anybody and it was making me laugh. <laughs> and, but everybody was asleep. So I had to wait till like 10 in the morning. You know, I worked till like five in the morning. I went to sleep. Then everybody woke up and then I pitched it to my wife and she laughed and I was like, okay. Oh and then I was like, Ooh, maybe I can do this guy. Yeah. It'd be really fun. And then, then when, when I did it for the pilot presentation, then one of the executives said, you should do the voice. Yeah. And I was like, yes, I should. You're like, Oh yeah, my God, I never thought right. of that. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's the best. It's the best character because his nemesis is a pet. <laughs> yes. so good. It's like the best thing ever. Yes. And then it's also, uh, yeah. Phineas and Ferb is such a musical show too. Yes. Yeah. So did yeah. you and Swampy write all the music? Well, we wrote the, we wrote most of the songs, mm -hmm. uh, other people on staff. And we, we wrote like 400 songs for that. Show, for that there's show. like so, a song, like almost every episode. It's yeah. You know, it, like, like Swampy and I wrote a song for the flop stars episode, which was the second one that we boarded. Um, which was that gitchy, gitchy goo, yeah, magic, yeah, I yeah, love yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh, we yes, just wanted to write a well. really silly pop song with nonsensical lyrics. Yeah. And, uh, and, and we wrote that and, uh, and played it for the executives and we had written the Perry, Perry the Platypus theme <laughs> and the theme song. Mm -hmm. And we had uh, our, the, the guy we wanted to do, to do the composing do do versions of those like like fully produced versions of those and when we were pitching the second episode it was flop stars and i'd done this little uh like movie of that song of how it was going to look with the finished song in there and we so we you know just pitching through and then we said and then we have a song sequence and i just pressed a button and the movie played and at the end of it the the number two guy at the channel who was at that pitch was like that was great can I hear that song again? You know, like, and then he wanted to hear the play, and he like listened to all three of those songs. He's like, "You guys wrote these? You're great songwriters. Can you write a song for every episode?" And we're like, "Yes, yes, we yes, can." Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's like because because Swampy and I always wrote songs on on Rocco's Modern Life for our show, for That's episodes so awesome. there because. We remember sugar, ba da ba bum, bum, bum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, That's from the Archies. Da, 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 da. Yeah. That's from a, from a cartoon yeah. when I was a kid. That's Everybody in the world remembers that song. Yeah. They don't always remember what realize. it's from. Yeah. yeah. And I have saw those episodes, and I don't remember anything that happened in those episodes, but that song is still in my yeah. head and will be forever. And I think that's sort of the, the, the shot you get at immortality in yeah. cartoons. Because, and you know, I think it stood the test of time. It's, it's 15 years after we oh, wrote yeah. Busted or Squirrels in My Pants or, or <laughs> well, I'll be honest, I don't really understand. Oh, yeah. You know, that, like, Renaissance on TikTok. Yeah, and so, I, so I just go on TikTok and I type in the name of any of the songs we wrote for that. And there's literally hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions of, of videos made That's, with that, that. So song as a sound. And, and especially Busted because I did all this choreography mm -hmm. that, that I drew for Candace and, and, and Vanessa and made this little rock video, you know, which, which didn't even make sense because they didn't know each other at the time. And I just put them in like, you know, <laughs> like that. in split screens. And, uh, and so many people dress up as those characters and do the split screen and that's do all so the choreography. Fun. And I was like, all right, well, well we that's, <laughs> that's it. It I, worked. So often when I get in my car, if Spotify isn't booted up, my iPod will go up and immediately start playing My Nama Nama, Ooh, My, my Nama Nama, 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 nama. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm always like, oh, oh my, my god, god. <laughs> it takes you back to a different time. Yeah, um, very fun. So uh, Doofenshmirtz was, I think, one of the best characters on Disney Channel, maybe ever. Yeah. Well, I can I can get behind that. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> my favorite, my favorite thing ever, and such a huge part of I know my childhood and so yeah, many yeah, people's yeah, childhoods. 
that we really want Doofenshmirtz to be a part of our adulthood right. as, as well. As he should be. As he should be. And right. strangely, he is. And strangely, yeah, he is. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so why doesn't he like just come on and do some adult things with us? Yeah. I don't mean that in a weird way. Yeah, we want, <laughs> well, what we're trying to get is we're trying to get Doofenshmirtz to come here and do some adult things with us. <laughs> so <laughs> this, <laughs> this is a segment we like to call Doofenshmirtz in, in Mediocre Situations. situations. Doofenshmirtz in Mediocre Situations. <laughs> so um, we would like to do a game, a okay. kind of like an improvised game. Yeah. Okay. Where we put Doofenshmirtz in different extremely mediocre scenes that we've yeah. never seen him in before. Okay. Yeah. And we can just act along with Doofenshmirtz of like, what would that be like yeah, if would... we saw Phineas and Ferb on, for example, CBS or something? Yeah, yeah. Or okay. just like at the gas station yeah. in real life okay. for Let's me. just see what Doofenshmirtz Let's is like happens. in a doll. Yeah. So the first situation we have, Dan, are you ready? Sure. Doofenshmirtz making small talk in an elevator. Olivia, okay. take it away. Ding. Ha! <sighs> I I'm uh, I'm up on on the penthouse. Okay. Sorry, uh, I'm I'm like I'll just having... I'll just I'll just press it. Hold no, on. can uh, you not come near me physically? Well, uh, the the buttons are near you. If you wanna you, you wanna take a step back, I'll. Okay, sorry. Just... I'm just having a really rough day. I I I apologize. I just I'm just trying to get home. Okay, uh, I'm just trying to get home too. Okay. And scene. That was beautiful, you <laughs> guys. Thank you. All right. Perfect. <laughs> um, that was gorgeous. Our, for our next scene, we have Doofenshmirtz realizes gas prices are at an all-time high. Um, are you ready? Sure. Yeah. So Doof- Doofenshmirtz, let's really? say you're in um, like Van Nuys. Van Nuys at like a Chevron? At a Chevron. There's an Arcos across the way. Uh-huh. I have no idea what gas prices are right it's now. It's like $6. It's like $6. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. It's minimum. Isn't that insane? That's why I have an electric car. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, listen. <laughs> I wish. Okay, so gas so. prices are like $6 right now. Yeah. You ready? Okay. And action. Wait. Wait. Is that a six? Is that a six or is that a misprint? Uh, hi, sir, I, I don't know. What, what's the issue? Is it $6 for, for gas right now? Yeah, it's $6 for gas. It's is big. that for the whole tank or is that for just, just like... I don't know if you've ever been alive before, a, but that's not ever how that is listed. They, they don't charge by the tank. They're, you're saying it's $6... Per gallon? Is that what you're saying? I don't think this is a car. Your vehicle doesn't look like a car. Well, I, I, but yeah, but it uses gas. So I, I I just put it in this little area here. What is this sign that says gasinator? It's, it's, it uses a lot of gas. That's why it's called the gasinator. But what does it do? That's what it uses. But what does it do? Uh, it, it turns other things to gas by spraying them with gas. That's a vehicle that would never be needed. I, I, I use it. But only to take over the tri-state area. I haven't even been using it for transportation. For that, I have a, a like a jet skiff that I go around. Are, are you lost? We're in Van Nuys, California. I may be lost. Is this part of the tri-state no, area? It's not part of the tri-state oh, area. Oh, okay. That might be the problem. Let me give you a map. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Amazing. <clears throat> All right. Next up, we've got uh, Duvenschmerz trying to figure out health, health insurance. insurance. Okay. <laughs> and... <laughs> Action, Olivia. Hi, uh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to let you know that the dose that you ordered is not covered by your health insurance, so you're going to have to call your doctor what? back. What dose is covered? Oh, uh, the dose is, a, it's a way smaller dose. So if you want to get like a 10 dose and get like eight of those instead of the 80 dose, then yeah. We... But that would be like a 10th of what I need sorry, are you to actually get better. Holding a small animated gun. <laughs> it's not animated. Is that it's, like a like a laser? No, thing? it's it's just drawn. It's a it's a cardboard cutout. Okay, well, it, we, so I, I, it's it's not actually functional. Okay, so you can't. I just fire feel that. a little naked without it. All I'll right. be honest. That's fine. I feel a little bit naked without my pasties on, and that's what we learned about the <laughs> health insurance worker. She's got a secret life. <laughs> but da da da, classic da, this da, pharmacist. Da, 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 da. For our next scene, we have Doofenshmirtz trying to have a healthier work-life balance. So you can be talking to anybody that you would talk to about um, your work-life balance. Uh, Anyone in your life. Could be, yeah. And action. Uh, You know, uh, uh, I I, I just wish I had a little more balance in my life because I feel like I'm working all the time. But my daughter comes over and, and she doesn't really want to have anything to do with me. She just wants to sit and listen to her iPad and stuff like that. But, but, but I feel, so I feel like, should I be sitting here trying to have a, have a conversation with her when that's not even what she wants? 
Um, so I just end up working, and then I feel like it's just put a wall between us. Sir, I'm really glad you decided to start therapy, but I just need to let you know before we continue, is yeah. your insurance is not going to cover this. I th- I had the same problem with the dosage that I was taking at, really? the, at the pharmacy really? I was at earlier. Yeah, no, your insurance is not going to cover this, mostly because we really don't support any of the things you're talking about. I Excuse don't... me, um, Dr. Renner, yeah. I have your pasties. Uh, uh, the oh, you wear them too? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just... a big health I must be missing out. It's a big health insurance mm, thing. I'm just going to leave them on the desk. And scene. <clears throat> and finally, Doofenshmirtz trying to unsubscribe from Christian Mingle. <clears throat> Is Christian right. Mingle a dating it's a site? dating it's site for dating site for Christian, Christian people. people only. All right. Okay. And action. Uh, no, and oh, oh, I don't know how to unsubscribe here. I, I, look, I click on this and it's grayed out. To upgrade. I click on no. Press I don't want to. Two. I don't want to upgrade. I, I, okay, back, back, to back. To get even more Christian matches. Press I don't three. No, I don't want more. I want less. They, they always hide the cancel to button To talk here. to it's, a representative, there's no option. I, well, I, that's good, because I don't want to talk to anybody. I want to get off To of... pay more money to ChristianMingle.com. No, no, I didn't mean to press that. Press I didn't mean any to press button. that. <laughs> and scene. Perfect. That was and, great. And here's the thing is, that's what Doofenshmirtz was doing behind the scenes when we didn't see him fighting yeah. Perry yes. the Platypus. Yeah, that's exactly. what he was doing. That was beautiful, doing. Dan. Thank you so much. I'm going yes. to have our studio audience clap. Studio audience. Studio audience. Yeah. Um, another fun thing about you is that you're huge on TikTok. We love that. We uh, love that you're like one of the kids. Are you calling me fat? Um, <laughs> yeah, you're yeah, huge. Yeah, yeah. You're gigantic. You're like on TikTok. Yes. You're you're like a TikTok icon. I, I have a lot of followers on TikTok. How do you I, feel about being a TikTok icon? Um, I I enjoy it because TikTok keeps me from do uh, like like during tick during the pandemic. I was finishing a movie and starting a new show mm-hmm. that had not really staffed up yet. I knew it was coming, but there was like a, there was like a four month period where I would have been doing nothing. And classically for me, that's a period where I sort of get depressed and right. lethargic no, that makes sense. And yeah. because I'm always creating, always creating for, yeah. for like the run of a series. I have no rest. And then suddenly I have rest and I don't know what to do with that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and there's also like a period of time, like, like the show that we, we just did our first mix of the new show. That's awesome. That show I've been working on for two years. I've been working on this, oh so the pilot of that I did two years ago. So, and so nobody sees it except my crew. Mm-hmm. And I like putting stuff out there and letting people see it. So, and that's what TikTok gave me is in the yeah. middle of the pandemic. Yeah. I was like, oh, I could do some of this. You know, I was just scrolling through and I put stuff up and I wasn't expecting the reaction I was getting because I, I, I hadn't really grown on Instagram or Twitter since the show stopped. Right. And I just felt like, oh, people aren't sort of don't really remember the show. Right. And I went on TikTok and apparently that's where everybody went. It was like, yeah. and I, suddenly I looked at the demographics and I was like, everyone on TikTok is between 13 and 24, yeah. basically. That's the, the, the huge portion. And... All those people between 13 and 24 are really almost only on TikTok. Yeah. And so, like, all I did was I did, like, a Doofenshmirtz voice thing, and it hit, like, 2 million views, which was, like, more than I'd ever gotten anywhere else. And I was like, oh, well, I should do more of this. And I started doing it and just having such so much fun, and I bought a green screen, and I did stuff with my daughters, and it, and it was sort of, like, what got me through pandemic. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and I'm just having a great time doing it. But, you know, but I am one of the oldest people people on TikTok. And, for... and the funny thing about that is that you're also technically, I think, eligible to be honorary Gen Z. Yeah, I think by because <laughs> of your, your presence <laughs> on TikTok, I think you're I think, eligible. Well, to... I'm a Gen Z icon. I don't think that, that, that puts me in you, Gen Z. You have I eligibility. Yeah. I, I talked to the foundation yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. last Good. week. I didn't and realize you, there was an actual yeah, you Gen Z have, have, foundation. Yeah, eligibility to be nominated to be Gen Z. Okay, so, well. so we decided that it would probably be good if we quizzed you on yeah. are you Gen Z? <laughs> yeah. This is going to go very badly, yeah. I can see. Uh, so, so this, this is, is a segment called Dan, Dan Povenmire, Povenmire, How Gen Z Are, are You? Okay. Uh, a perfect segment that applies to so many people. Yes, yes. Um, you, you do this segment with every, every, every guest, guest, right? Yeah, every okay, guest yeah. we do that same uh, So Dan, in this game, we're going to ask you some questions. And based on your answers, we will decide how old you are. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, you're huge on TikTok. So yeah. you already are starting with some Gen Z points. Yes. Okay? Okay. So you're at a solid 16 years old right now. Okay. Dan That's where we're putting you. That's where we're starting. That's yeah. where, my base is yeah. 16. We'll start you there. Okay. Based on your following, based on who you are, we're giving you 16 years old. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's test your Gen Z knowledge. All right. <clears throat> all right. First question. Damn. Why is Pete Davidson hot? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of what I can say. Dan, why uh, is he's got a lot of tattoos, mm -hmm. and he's uh, and he's been with Ariana Grande mm -hmm. and Re and uh, and uh, Kim Kardashian, and that yeah. like guys can be ugly if yeah. they've been with a lot of very beautiful girls. Mm -hmm. People consider them attractive for yeah. some reason. I don't understand. That. I will absolutely take that as an answer. And yes. Olivia, what is the what is the we, uh, answer we, we have? We also down? would have accepted. According to the New York Post, it's because he embraces his mental health issues and sickly body. That's not so nice, New York Post. But another uh, answer we also would have accepted is tall. Yeah, he's tall. He's so, tall. But tall, no, I think, tall gets, you get away with a lot when you're tall. I think you absolutely did great on that, though. What yes. would you, would you put his age up or down based on that answer? I'm going to keep you at 16. Yeah, you're Excellent. 16, so congratulations. Excellent. Uh, number two, Dan, are you ready? Yes. Dan, how are you feeling about Olivia Rodrigo only being a recurring character instead of a series regular on HSMTM and TS? <laughs> I've never heard that acronym before. Ugh, oh, 18. Um, You're at 18 now. <laughs> uh, I, I, I was not aware that, that, was, that she was being downgraded. If oh, was, if well, 23. Downgraded. But I will say this. You must be 23. I will say, we'll say this. I personally know... The two people that uh, driver's license is written about. Oh, I've worked with both of gosh. those people. Wow, which uh, which was weird for me because I really yeah. like this song and then I, I heard what it was about and it was like, I oh, know. I've worked with both of these people that that it's I, about. It seems okay. Well, Dan, everyone seems like a sweetheart. That's what I'll say. Uh, from not really knowing the acronym and also not knowing that Olivia Rodrigo is now only a recurring. Oh, I, 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 I knew what the acronym was when you said it. Oh, okay. I did. Don't try to save yourself now. <laughs> no, I've just never, never so heard anybody abbreviate it because I, I, <laughs> I personally like saying. High School Musical, the musical, the series. Okay, because it's you're, a 20, name. you're 20 now. You're okay. of, I okay. put you okay. up at 23. So, so Dan, okay. you're, you're back to 20. Yeah, you're 20. And okay. uh, the correct answer was outraged, <laughs> but understanding, because Olivia Rodrigo's thriving music career comes first. Yeah. yeah. So, Dan, you're 20 years old. You're 20 years okay. old, which is still pretty which young. Which is still okay. Yes. Um, okay, so, Olivia? Uh, next question. Dan, do you have ice in your veins? <gasps> you are 14. <laughs> you are literally 14. Oh my God. You guys, if you're not watching this, Dan just did ice in my veins. We, we also would have accepted yes. <laughs> so you are now at 14. Okay, yes. Dan, are you ready? Yes. What year were you born? <laughs> uh, I, I will say that uh, that in that song that I just put up, put up there, I said that, uh, that Hank Green is young enough to be my kid. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. that is true. Okay, no, so is, incorrect. Is, correct answer is 2001. Yes, I, <laughs> I was born in 1963. No, the correct <laughs> answer that means. is 2001. I don't know anything that starts with 19. No, I'm right here. Uh, the correct answer is 2001. Dan, you're at 30 years old. Okay, yes. and now this is important. <laughs> I'm at 30 years old after yeah. saying I was born in 1960. Yeah. No, 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 you're just then, at 30. Then, then, then you yeah. guys aren't really good at math. Well, you, no, no, were, no, no. you, were, you, were, you were at 14, 14. before. Okay, good. And then you got raised some point okay, but I'm it at, has to yeah okay, so now you're gotcha. at 30 okay okay um final question all right here we go dan if two trains are driving towards one another and the first train leaves town a at 5 a.m traveling at 60 miles per hour and the second train leaves town b at 7 a.m traveling 70 miles per hour what is the significance of lil nas x's album name montero I don't actually know the, 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 the thing, but I do know that he put a video up saying that uh, that uh, Doofenshmirtz is one of the reasons he realized he was gay. Wait, was he Wait, into he, Doofenshmirtz? Was he into uh, apparently, apparently I, 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 I do, do edit it and said, well, glad to help, I guess. Okay, yeah, what an honor. Okay, so, yeah, so, so, for, so there you go. And yeah. I, have, uh, I have sort of worked with uh, Lil, Lil Nas X because oh I did, because he's a big fan of the show. And 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 I drew a, a caricature of him with with the the characters as a giveaway for some contest 
to promote the movie. Oh I, my um, goodness. First off, uh, I love that all. Yeah, for, first off, that is an absolute but, honor. But so what is the actual, so the actual what is Montero? answer is it's his first name. I had no idea. Yeah, isn't that yeah, fun Montero's fact? his first name. But I because no you've idea. worked with him and because you helped him come out, um, <laughs> I'm going to give you I'm gonna, 25. Yeah, let's say you're 25. Oh, so you end down. this game at Excellent. 25, which, which is, is also age. my age. Woo-hoo. So congratulations. You guys are twinsies, Excellent. and I'm, I'm s- older than both of you. <laughs> How old are you? I'm 27. But uh, so put together, yeah. yeah, I'm still older than both of you. Oh, <laughs> perfect. Perfect. perfect, perfect. Except that you're 25. <laughs> Um, um, I, I love that. I, I love that Wait, Lil I, Nas had to crush on Dr. Jupin's race. I love that. That's so awesome. That's incredible. Awesome. Dan, who's the hottest cartoon character? Jessica Rabbit. Okay, great. Oh, I mean, that's absolutely I mean, that's yeah, probably that's true. That's yeah. absolutely accurate. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, who's, the, who's the hottest uh, cartoon character you've ever created? Uh, probably Vanessa. Yeah. Okay, love that. Yeah, she's, so. um, she's hot. Who's the least attractive? Who, who are you personally least attracted to? <laughs> I think Doofenshmirtz is, okay. is on the top okay. of that I think list. it would be concerning if you said yes. he was the hottest. So <laughs> yes. you would put Perry the Platypus over Doofenshmirtz in terms of who you're attracted to? Uh, I think Perry's a sexy character. I that's, think so, that, too. That, I just wanted to like, make sure. You know, that, you know, like, like she wore a shirt with him. No, I think yeah, he's yeah. one of the most attractive characters. Yes. I just wanted to see if you also yes. thought that. We, we, we found out that the, 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 the girls were wa- who were watching the show would would call Ferb and Perry really sexy. And we figured that the only thing they really share in common is they <laughs> Neither just of don't them talk. talk. <laughs> oh my God. Is. So I think we know what, what, what women what, want. Yes, we know, we what, know women what women want. We know what women want. Shut up. Shut up. Yes, you stop talking. That's exactly right. Damn. Well, I mean, uh, to be fair, um, uh, you know, Perry does say like... Yeah, that's not. Yeah, and Ferb has one line per episode. Yeah, so, yeah. listen, yeah. that sound is not not sexy. No, if you're especially <laughs> if you're like an animal who is into that. Yeah, but like you, you know that that's like we just made that up. I just had had wait. G. Bradley Baker come in and make up a, right. a bunch of noises and, and then, I just picked one and I said let's this is what it, I said it should be like a purring chirping noise, sort of like a little bit you yeah. know like like you know. That and he was, he did this, which I can't do. And I picked that and put it in there. Didn't you find out later that it was like legit? That's basically what they sound like. It's if you hear, if you look up what they sound like, it's like that. I found that out because we found out, or the scientific community found yeah. out. In 2020, the, the platypuses are teal under yes, UV light. Yes, yes. Which yes. I thought was hilarious that they're teal. And then I saw a picture of it, and it's exactly yeah. the teal that yeah. Perry is. Such a specific thing to get. And I was like, I was 20 years ahead of the scientific community yeah. on that guess. On, on I was like, that's too weird of a coincidence. What else did I think? Did I just make up? And I was like, what do they sound like? And I looked at it, and then they sound just like that. Oh do like, they fight crime? Am I am I creating reality around me? I think you're manifesting like, you're the manifesting. basic concept of platypus. I think you should manifest what more animals do. Yes. <laughs> just, yeah. Well, th- th- this guy did this whole thing because there's a theory on ma- on on uh, you know reality is created by shared consciousness and shared belief and yeah. stuff like that. And and it's a fairly popular theory. And but this guy went on and said. This is the biggest evidence of this theory. The, 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 like Dan didn't predict this; he, he caused this to happen it. because millions of people all over the world, when they think of a platypus, they think of a teal platypus. So that just happened just because happened. of that. And I was like, if I have that kind of power, even unknowingly, yeah, and I would waste it on making platypuses <laughs> glow green under a black light. <laughs> Why did I get this power? That's right. It was like, I would be, I would be a total tool. Oh so. my With great power comes great responsibility. Yes. You just have to know that anything you create is going to come true in the scientific <laughs> yeah. community. Yeah. yeah, so just, yeah, yeah create. So be careful. That's, yeah. the, that's probably the weirdest thing that's ever happened. <laughs> yeah, I'd say is, create more bees. seeing that picture of an actual teal platypus and going... <laughs> Do you think you could stop a, global warming if you put your mind to it? I, I, maybe I should have done I think, that. I think maybe your I next show that. should be about how global yes. warming is reversing. Yeah, yes. it decides maybe to I go should. away. Yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Dubin Schwartz yes. needs to make a, a global warming go away. Anator. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, Dan, what's what's next for you? 
Uh, I've got a show called uh, Hamster and Gretel, which we, which we just finished our first mix on. Woo! Uh, coming out sometime a little bit later this year. That's not, so not, exciting. Not too far in the distance, but uh, but I don't know the exact date. And uh, and I I think it's maybe the best thing I've done. It's, Fuck yeah, uh, Hamster and Gretel, I love that. It's it's got the humor of Phineas and Ferb, but but like a lot of heart and real stories, and it's it, it's, it's it's sort of at its core about the relationship between. A brother who's about sixteen and a much younger sister. Oh, that's sweet. And uh, which was sort of the relationship I had with my little sister. I had a sister who was like ten years younger than that's me. So cute. And uh, uh, but it's the little sister and uh, the little sister and the brother are in a in a car and they get visited by like an alien spacecraft that tells them that they're gonna that the two of you have been chosen to receive superpowers and they shoot them with this this big beam. And the powers go on to the little sister and her pet hamster, who happens to be in the car. Nice. And uh, that's and so, really fun. You know, there's a little friction caused by that, but, I, I mean, uh, that's but really it's really fun. I'm loving it. We're doing songs. That's We're doing. So there's cool. a lot of action and heart and humor, and it's just one of my favorite things I've done. Oh, that's so exciting! I'm so excited well, I'm, to see I'm it. I'm very excited uh, I'm, for that on, on the Disney Channel. Oh yes, on Disney Channel, on and, Disney and then Channel. Disney Plus almost immediately after. Oh, yeah, yeah, as, yeah, as, as it goes. goes. All it roads is. lead to Disney Plus. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, yeah, basically yeah. what, That's how what it is we know yeah. in entertainment now. Um, Dan, where can the people find you online on yeah, TikTok like, and Instagram? I, I, am, uh, I am at Dan Pavenmeyer on TikTok and I believe uh, Twitter. I'm, I'm verified on both. And I think I'm Dan.Pavenmeyer on Instagram because when I did that, I didn't think I could use the same exact handle as i was on on twitter because i don't know how to use technology that that's valid you just added 10 years yeah yes, congratulations exactly. being, yes, exactly. on being 35 <laughs> now you're 35 yes. you look great for 35 Thanks. i really Thanks. do Thanks. um I, I this has been so fun yeah for, no you're uh, you're just one of the best yeah. uh, people in the whole wide world literally <laughs> very excellent very cool uh what a what a fun thing Dubin schwartz is like the best character of all time oh, so it you. is thank such a, a fun a fun excellent time. thank you <laughs> so fun to have him around yes. yeah um thank you for hanging out with sure, us this was fun and um hopefully we can do it again and yeah. i'll hang um Absolutely. in the meantime if you want to find us anywhere online uh we are on instagram tiktok youtube all the things all as those Things. Oh, I'm on YouTube too. I'm yes. doing Pavanmire on YouTube. Oh, there you I'm, go. I'm, go. YouTube. I'm putting doing a lot more energy into YouTube. Bada boom, bada bing. Heck Check yeah. out his YouTube. Check out Everything his YouTube. he just said is gonna be on the screen. Yes. Yeah, so we'll do that. You, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do it. It'll here. probably have already been on the screen at this point. Yeah, and you'll yes. see it and, and you'll, you'll see it. it. You'll click it. You'll click it. You'll click it. It I won't guess. do anything. It won't It'll do pause anything. the video. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're at Sid and Olivia on every platform. Um, thank you so much for hanging out with us. And we will see you next Tuesday. Tuesday. Bye. 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 Stay evil. <laughs> <laughs>